Hello, I'm Helen from Journal With Purpose and welcome to my latest YouTube video. Today I'm going to talk to you about my planning system and how I've managed to develop something that works really well for me. I've been asked lots of questions over the years about how I managed to stay so organised and seemingly get so much done. So I've definitely picked up some uh, tips and tricks that work really well for me. So I just thought if I walk you through every stage of my planning process and depending on what your situation is, hopefully at least some of these tips will be useful for you. So the very first thing I do is start getting everything out of my head. Now I call this a master list, but you could call it a brain dump. Anything you like, it's just that time for you really to empty your head of every single thing that you need to get done and all of the things really importantly that you want to be working on. Sometimes I use a big whiteboard for this, particularly if I'm starting to plan for a whole new year, just so that I've got more space. Um, but usually on a monthly basis, I just use an A4 pad of lined paper. And I start thinking about everything that I want to get done uh, for work, around the home and personal things. So it could be personal things for me or for other people. And I don't write this list in any particular order at all. I just let the thoughts from my head flow. And I just find this such a good process anyway, because if you're anything like me, you have lots of things swirling around your head all the time. And this is just a great chance to get them all on paper. So there's always lots of work, work tasks on there for me, but there's often things like new skills that I want to learn or improve at, some courses that I really want to take, maybe something I want to get done in the garden or around the home. So absolutely everything goes down on this piece of paper and I try not to filter anything at this stage. The next thing I do is start to highlight the different tasks and I just have a little key for things that I have to get done and things that I want to get done. And this is to make sure that my time isn't too dominated just by the things that have to get done. And so there I definitely have things that I have to do for other people. I have things for, I have a schedule for Patreon of things I have to get done every month. So those all will be highlighted with have to. And then everything else are the things that I want to get done. And I try to make sure there's a really good amount of those on my list because I think that really adds to my happiness when I'm working on things that are important to me, not just important to other people. And I love lots of the work that I get to do, but I really like to make sure that I've got time to work on myself, improve my skills, all those sorts of fun things. And the next thing I do on this piece of paper is start to write down some deadlines. And this is really easy for things that I'm doing for other people or things that I have on a schedule. But I like to set some kind of deadline for the things that I want to get done. And I, this isn't to put any extra pressure on myself, but it's to try and give me some guidelines of when I want to be working on those things. So, for example, it might be if it was improved watercolour skills, I might put the end of the year, but I'll then start thinking about what I'd need to do. Maybe I want to take one course every month throughout the rest of this year. Um, but there's other things that I want to get done, like I've got some knitting and sewing projects on the go. And those I can set myself some deadlines maybe over the next couple of months. And that's just to make sure they stay in the top of my mind. Once I've got all of this list complete, I start working on my plans for the month. And this list I may well come back and add to, but at this point, this is where I'll open up my planner. I'm using a Hobonichi, but it really doesn't matter what kind of planner or system that you're using. 
And I then write down on the left hand side of my monthly calendar all of the things that I would like to get done or have to get done throughout the course of that month. So I have a look through that list for any deadlines that have either been set for me or that I've set for myself and just start writing those down. And I usually do this about a week before the new month begins. And then I look through my calendar and I write in the dates of things that absolutely have to get done. And I then start trying to block out some time for the other projects. And I'll often do this in pencil so that I have some flexibility to move things around. But I think it's really useful to start planning out what your month would look like. And for me, a month feels like quite a long time and I don't know what else is going to come in. So, so I just use pencil. But if I have to erase something, I like to move it rather than just erase it off that schedule to make sure that I'm just moving that block of time from one place to another. So those things still get done. After that, I've got my weekly schedule. And for me, this feels much more tangible. I can start looking forward to hopefully what my week's going to look like. And I typically do this over the weekend so that when I start my week on the Monday, I can look, I've already got my plan in place for exactly what I'm hoping to do throughout the course of that week. And of course, nothing's perfect. Things come in and I don't ever get to everything on my list, but I do get through a lot of it. So in a similar way to the monthly planner, I write down everything on the left hand side that I want to get done. So at this point, I'm looking at that monthly list and just picking off the things that I think are realistic to get done during that week. And again, I start in pencil, just blocking out that week where I'm hoping I'm going to be able to work on certain projects. And I just find it really helpful to have that whole plan ahead for the week. And next, naturally, we get on to the daily plans. And this is where I do use the time ladder, which the Hobonichi has, but you could definitely do one for yourself, where I start then just blocking out how long I think certain things are going to take me, which is an interesting learning experience in itself, but start blocking out throughout the day what I'm hoping to be working on at different points. And I always try and make sure that this is a good mixture of the things that have to be done and the things that I want to get done. And when you're looking at your kind of time ladder for the day, however you do it, I think it's important to think about how you best work. I know that some people like to get their most difficult job done first thing in the morning. I don't work like that personally, but you may well. So it's worth thinking about really what's right for you. I like to get lots of little things done first. I often have quite a long task list. So for me, my first hour is often spent just dealing with emails, replying to messages, getting photos taken that I want to share. And that's usually my first hour of the day. Perhaps while I'm having a cup of coffee and I just know I can get lots of things ticked off the list. And then the next thing I usually do after that is probably my most complicated or difficult task of the day. So mid morning, off until lunch, that's when I focus at my absolute best. So that's where I'll try and do those things that I find more challenging. And I know in the afternoon that I tend to be feeling quite creative, but I'm perhaps not as switched on to things that I find more difficult and challenging. So I would say play around with your daily schedule to find something that works for you. Another tool that I use, which you might find helpful, is if you have a long list for the day, I think that can be quite overwhelming. So by the side of my desk, I always have a little notepad and what I tend to do is look for the first three things or if they're really small, the first five things and jot those down on that piece of paper. And I then put my planner to one side and I just focus on what's on that little notepad at that time. And once I've got those done, I go back to my planner, mark them off, and I then write down the next three or five things that I want to be working on. And that stops me procrastinating, thinking about everything else that's on the list. I'm just focused on those tasks that I've put on my notepad. 
My task lists also often look quite long because I break big tasks down into small chunks. So rather than have one big project and that being my task, I think about all the different steps I'm going to need to complete to be able to get that done. And then I can work on them in small manageable chunks and it really helps me to get started. If something on my list is going to take 15, 20 minutes, that feels really achievable. If something's going to take two or three hours, I'm going to keep putting it off. So I would definitely say look for those big things, especially if you're putting them off and just break them down into the smallest steps you possibly can and list them down. I also find it really satisfying then to cross all of those off. The final thing I feel I should mention, I've shared it in one of my previous videos, is that I am using a separate business planner this year. Now, for me, it's far too early to say whether this is successful and what it's bringing to my planning routine. What I am really enjoying about it is that it asks you lots of questions. So more of a kind of strategic view of what you're doing, what you want to be working on, things like that. And I was already doing that to some extent, but having the specific questions there, I found really useful. So at the moment, I feel like the first part of the planner, thinking about the whole year ahead, has been really helpful. But maybe the monthlies is too much of a duplication of what I'm already doing. But I want to give it at least six months before I talk about that in any more detail. Because I just think that's a really good time to find out whether a planning system is working for you. So I really hope that's helped you in some way. Um, so I've had so many questions asking me to talk about my planning routine. Um, I always make sure I do my planning at the end of one day for the next day so that when I wake up, it's already down on paper what I'm going to be working on. And say things happen, you might be ill, something might come in that just overtakes your plan for the day. But getting in the habit of that whole planning system, I think is really helpful and say so tiny chunks so that you don't feel overwhelmed. And that little notepad to me, that's my kind of secret, my key of how I get things done, because I just push everything else to one side so I can just keep focused on those. So I really hope you found that helpful. If you have, it would be great if you'd leave a like under the video. If you've got any questions, comments or anything you'd like me to cover in future videos, then please do just let me know. As always, I'd love to say a massive thank you to everybody who's joined me over on Patreon. Well, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you're doing really well and I look forward to speaking with you really soon in my next video.